red van is uh, from my sister who loves these kind of camping vans. Not cool. All right, so we're at Dog Beach and welcome to Lobster Claws Recovery. And we're still at Dog Beach. And we have a new member of the family. This is the uh, White's TDISL. And it is um, very nice here. A little wavy, but considering all the action here, Uh, it is pretty nice. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so we're going to give this a shot. It's not the first time I've had a pulse unit, but it is the first time I've taken this unit out. I did not bring the headphones on purpose. So we're gonna um, ground balance this. I really don't think it needs to be ground balance. For those of you who are, are keeping score, we've got um, we've got um, gain up around. We're gonna put it around the two o'clock position. We're going to put ground balance on the 7 o'clock position. Pulse delay at 10. Um, I don't know what that's measured in, but um, this will pick up the smallest gold, right? Uh, and we have it in all conductivity. We can uh, selectively only dig low, low targets or high targets. So we're going to test. You can hear that sort of objection at the end, that deep objection. That's iron, and that's what it should do on iron. OK. We're not doing any upper beach. There's not much we're not digging. Right now I'm just looking at the beach. We got a low spot here. We're gonna hit low spots and anything that looks good. This thing is waterproof up to the control box. And then after that, I think it's going to need a bit of a ground balance. It's um, reacting to the salt water. We're going to try bringing up the pulse delay a bit. I'm going to leave it down and deal with the, um, we'll just see. I didn't, t I didn't make any changes. Definitely react to the salt water a bit. I try to dial up the ground balance a bit. Try this again.
I raised the ground balance to eight. And pulse delay is like about 12. I didn't bring the headphones on purpose. I thought I heard something. Probably should have brought the headphones, but... I risk missing targets. I we're gonna dig it. We're digging everything right now. And we're gonna look. is a mangrove seed. Look, Penny. Cool, huh? Okay, so this is 2022. If you were to avoid this beach for 100 years, you would have mangroves all over these beaches, which is what used to be here. All right, so we're on the board, yay. This is a very sensitive detector. And I'm going to put up with the noise because I don't care. For those of you who think I swing too fast, what do you think now? There was something there. I heard it. All right, give it a shot. <laughs> now let's, let's look at the math, all right? Because there's always math. Anyone who tells you metal detecting doesn't have math in it is <laughs> This is a, this unit is, um, let's see, less than one-fifth the price, one-fifth the price of the new Garrett Axiom at $4,000, okay? Less than one-fifth the price. Now, would I get the Axiom? Oh, yeah. But... Since I'm not rich. Okay, we got it. I'm waiting for waves. All right. See it? Quarter. All right, here's a story for you. And I've told some version of it um, in the past. This is 2022, 20, 30 years ago, people were on these beaches metal detecting with first and second generation pulse induction detectors. All right. If you think you're not finding a lot of stuff, do you ever wonder why? Because they dug it all up. But there is more, because people always lose their stuff. I'm going 
got it. Okay. That's another quarter. It's pretty good. Noticing, notice that pinpointing is not, pinpointing is not that tough. Trying to avoid damage. And I don't want to get water in my boots. Okay, it's another quarter. Which is approximately three feet from the last quarter. So far, I'm loving this. Now, usually with me, I will, if I get, if I get a detector, I get rid of a detector. So the, um, um, the Garrett Sea Hunter 2 is gone. I got another one. Got it. Penny. And a bottle cap. I could dig at the zoo. It's a penny. Now, let's talk about how deep this thing goes. a penny. Okay. Turn the threshold up. See if I can hear the break in the threshold. All right. Whatever. Let's keep going. Yeah, it's a really interesting place. Good looking people, good looking dogs. I don't know, whatever. Come on, gold rings. If you're scared of people looking at you, metal detecting on the beach is not for you. Unless you can get over it. Because 
everybody will stare at you. So for those of you who don't know anything about how these work, these are pulse induction detectors. They work in several phases. It sends down a, a pulse of electromagnetic energy. It waits for the return. If it picks up something like a submarine pinging an em enemy submarine, the third step is gonna be, it's gonna make the detector beep or something, right? Buzz, whatever. Uh, pretty much impervious to EMI, but that can vary depending on the unit. And this thing has a frequency control, which is a lot like adjusting the frequency on the XP dais. We're digging a crater. Got it. That's about a foot down. And that's a marginal depth of this. Brought half the beach with me. Um, it's a lot of targets for two hours, and I was digging my ass off. I really was. I was moving. One guy said to me, he goes, boy, are you moving fast? That looks like great exercise. To which I said, you have no idea. Um, did I bring the MI6? No. Uh, this kind of detecting, you don't need it. Let's make sure there's nothing more there. Okay. Uh, these are really good bags, by the way. I, I did have to re-sew on the sewing machine uh, the straps, but uh, it's a no-brainer to re-sew them. Uh, should always be prepared to repair your gear. Uh, it'll last a lot longer, and you don't have to uh, just go run out and buy another one. Um, this actually will fit in there. It's pretty cool, right? This is a good bag. I, I would definitely... Um, stand behind that bag so it's s h r x y metal detectors i've never seen one of their metal detectors I, I have no idea so they have a zip pocket and they have a pocket here um and i put all kinds of cool stuff in there and there's inside pockets and it's pretty good so um you'll see more of the white's tdisl uh, this is uh, a few days out from Hurricane Ian, about to hit uh, Central and uh, Northern Florida um, on the East Coast and most of, of Western Florida, uh, or I should say Florida on the West Coast, uh, in a couple of days. And um, can't really say whether I'm going to be able to get out uh, and what opportunities we're going to figure out are going to be there because we envision uh, sand blowing off the beaches, uh, which is one of your best opportunities to find deep targets. Sand um, is an amazing, uh, correction, wind is amazingly effective at removing sand uh, from the beach. It's, I would think, even better than water, but between the two of them, uh, we could see the beaches taken down. I just don't quite understand exactly what the impact is going to be uh, with, it, with the winds blowing pretty much offshore. Although halfway through a hurricane, when the winds uh, reverse direction after the eye passes, uh, they will uh, probably create quite a bit of, a fair amount of storm surge coming back over the coast, maybe after the, the eye has, has passed, could tear out the beaches quite a bit up there. Um, I would not be ignoring that if you live anywhere near there. Um, and we're talking about like Vero Beach, Sebastian, Cape Canaveral, those areas, um, and moving north uh, towards Port uh, St. Augustine and Jacksonville. Okay, thank you for visiting Lobster Cause Recovery. I'm Brittany, and thank you for joining this on this hunt. Uh, this is the first hunt for the TDISL. We thought it was a pretty good one, uh, and I expect it will get better. Will I use the XP Deus? To, again, yes, but it is 
a tool in the toolbox and every time I have something to do, I'm not grabbing a hammer when maybe I need a screwdriver. You follow? Gotta use the right tool for the right job. Okay, bye.